Tonight at 6, two harbors leaders distanced themselves from the mayor's out there plans. And the lawyer for the anonymous billionaire speaks out. Plus, with Omicron cases peaking around the nation, local experts break down the timeline for our region. And redrawing political boundaries draws Wisconsinites to rally today as the Supreme Court is set to weigh in. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 6. Welcome to the CBS 3 News at 6. We're taking a live look at downtown Virginia. And as you can see, the roads there are slightly snow covered in that area as a small clipper system makes its way through our region. Good evening. I'm Briggs LaSavage. Thanks for joining us. Kristen has the night off. It's been a calm day in Duluth, but a small snowstorm could impact your nightly commute. Our meteorologist Dave Anderson joins us now. While those roads that we saw in Virginia are already snow co covered, it looks like uh, snow is just starting here in Duluth. Yeah, right now it is, and it's coming in from northwest heading to the southeast. So the Iron Range has received some snow. Now we're getting our turn at the head of the lakes. Wisconsin and Michigan will get the chance as the night goes on. Road conditions at the moment have been getting a little bit worse. Scattered slippery spots being reported now moving in from northwest to southeast and right on the doorstep of the Twin Ports here. So bottom line, travelers across the region doing so tonight and tomorrow morning do take it easy. You know, I might get to go to Virginia tomorrow and check out that Aldi's up there that we showed the picture of. So hopefully our hardworking road crews get things eased up fairly quickly in the morning tomorrow, and they usually do. There's the low pressure system working through the area right now, and in case your town hasn't seen any of the snow yet, there's a 70 to 80 percent chance you will through early tomorrow morning. Then higher pressure building in from Canada once again will start to clear things up by Saturday afternoon and make us pretty chilly again come Sunday morning. Then we'll go back towards 15 below. But tonight, thanks to cloud cover, we'll have lows of three above. A nice break from the bitter cold. One to three inches of snow likely around the area. Tomorrow's high temp, 10 above is half of what we're supposed to be this time of year. The normal is 20. But once we get into Sunday, getting even 10 will be a hard thing to do. We'll talk about how long this latest cold snap will last then, coming up in a couple more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Tonight, two Harbor City Councilors and the lawyer of an apparent billionaire investor are speaking out about the mayor's big ideas that are causing a big stir in the community. We first reported last night about Mayor Chris Swanson's plans to turn the small town into a major tourist destination. Swanson is looking for investors to fund a passenger submarine, a marina, a helipad, and an underwater hotel. The mayor claims he's working with a reclusive billionaire investor named Mr. O. He says it's possible Mr. O could invest $400 million in those projects. Today we spoke with Brett Rawson, who says he's Mr. O's lawyer out of a firm in Utah. He claims Mr. O is acting as a personal business consultant to Mayor Swanson, and he apparently hired Mr. O with his own money. With the lack of many key details, though, about this possible investor, we asked Rawson why people should think that this isn't a scam. Here's what he had to say. There has been... No, no money from the city requested, or nor is it desired, by my client. My client doesn't need the money. My client isn't doing it for the money. My client isn't uh, asking anything of the people of Two Harbors. He's providing some advice to a mayor who is interested in driving economic development to that region. Last night, the Two Harbor City Council met for seven minutes to discuss the way Mayor Swanson is communicating about this project and asking for investors. No councillors shared their thoughts, but today, their vice president shared a statement on behalf of the city. They distanced themselves from Mr. O and said the city is not involved with him or any anonymous person on this proposed project or any other. They said they take the matter before them very seriously and want to make sure that what they do is right for the community. The mayor's communications about the tourism project has included a podcast episode with Mr. O, a website, and messaging on his official mayoral Twitter account. That will all now be reviewed by the Minnesota Attorney General. A Duluth man is behind bars after admitting he killed all four of his roommates' emotional support ferrets with a BB gun. Levi Ehrenberg has been charged with four counts of animal cruelty. Police say the 27-year-old and his roommate, Maurice Gusky, were arguing last week when Ehrenberg threatened to hurt the ferrets with a knife. The next day, police found their bodies in their apartment. 
Gusky told CBS3 the ferrets helped him emotionally after suffering a stroke. Ehrenberg is being held at the St. Louis County Jail and will be back in court next month. His bail is set at $20,000. The Duluth Police Department is warning about a phone scam. According to the DPD, the scammer pretends they're a Duluth police officer and requests payment over Venmo, threatening a warrant for the person's arrest. Police spokespeople say they will never call requesting an online payment and they remind the community to never give out personal or financial information over the phone. Opening statements in the civil rights trial for three former Minneapolis police officers begin Monday. It took just one day to seat the jury yesterday for Tao Tao, Jay King and Thomas Lane. They're all accused of violating George Floyd's civil rights during a May 2020 arrest that led to his death. A hearing today determined if certain evidence would be allowed. The defense asked to exclude images from video of Floyd's arrests and side-by-side -side exhibits that will play two videos at once. Tomorrow marks the 49th anniversary of the Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade decision giving women the right to choose abortion care. Two Northland groups are recognizing that anniversary with a gathering in downtown Duluth. They're hosting a Roe v. Wade party on the plaza outside the building for women. That event starts at 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. There will be music and pro-choice rally signs provided. Enbridge Energy has stopped the flow of spilled groundwater. That began a year ago when workers installing the Line 3 oil pipeline in northwestern Minnesota punctured an aquifer. The spill happened near Enbridge's terminal in Clearbrook. It was one of the worst environmental accidents throughout the 340-mile pipeline construction process. Workers dug too deeply into the ground, resulting in a 24-million-gallon groundwater leak. The company told the Minnesota DNR it stopped the uncontrolled leak this week. The DNR said it will monitor the repair, and the investigation remains ongoing. The agency is also looking at further restoration, mitigation, and penalties. The Omicron variant of COVID is sweeping like wildfire across the country. Now, as experts believe much of the nation has hit the peak of this wave, Minnesota and Wisconsin could soon follow. CBS 3's Quinn Gorham breaks down where we're at in the Northland right now and what we can expect in the coming weeks. This week, St. Louis County could find itself in the worst week of the pandemic it's seen so far. When we were seeing those high case numbers around um, November, December of 2020, um, we're higher than that now. The highly infectious Omicron variant has a tight grip on the arrowhead. This past week, St. Louis County alone recorded nearly 2,200 cases and nearly a 20% testing positivity rate, according to Amy Westbrook with St. Louis County Public Health. This week alone, we saw 50 people being admitted to the hospital, and we've also seen the highest number of pediatric admissions. That number is already bad, but Westbrook worries it could be even higher. On reported at-home tests and backed up reporting from labs aren't currently counting toward that number. In reality, we um, most likely are seeing a much higher community transmission rate than what we can validate. Amidst the bad news, there's a silver lining. Mayo Clinic data scientist Dr. Curtis Storley believes with the most ideal scenario after the peak, we could see numbers drop back down to summer 2021 levels. I think we're going to have, you know, this honeymoon period after the peak. The good news is we're, we are getting pretty close. Westbrook says that peak is likely coming soon, but the Omicron variant is unpredictable. So um, it's hard to say whether we're, you know, currently peaking or we may peak in another couple weeks. Westbrook advises caution despite the seemingly mild nature of the variant. It's mild for a lot of people, but not for everyone. And certainly um, there is a correlation of hospitalization and vaccination rate. It's important to remember that even after the peak, cases still need to fall back down. Westbrook believes that it could be weeks or months before cases fall back to manageable levels. Meanwhile, University of Wisconsin Superior is reporting strong enrollment for this academic year. According to university leaders, the spring semester continued a positive enrollment trend from last fall with an 8% increase year over year. That marks a five-year high in undergraduate, new and transfer students and graduate students. The numbers also show a sharp uptick in international students. UWS welcomed more than 70 international students 
That far exceeds its 10-year average of 17 new international students for the spring semester. More than half of the international students came from Nepal. EWS ranks second in the UW system for its percentage of international students. That's only behind UW-Madison. The Wisconsin Supreme Court is set to release the state's next legislative maps in the coming weeks. Today in Eau Claire, rally goers outside the county government center called on the justices to draw them fairly. They want to end gerrymandering, a, a practice in which politicians draw maps to favor one party. We're here because we need fair maps. We're here because gerrymandering has had such a negative impact on our government, on our governing, and on our voters. Smith, who we just heard from there, says the current maps, which were passed by the Republican-controlled legislature and signed into law by then-Republican Governor Scott Walker, are gerrymandered. The state Supreme Court is tasked with drawing new maps because Governor Evers and state legislators could not come to an agreement. Still to come on Live Local CBS3, young mushers and their pups are gearing up for this weekend's race. How you can cheer them on next. Duluth Airport's wake-up temperature was 9 below, and you can see this live look here that we're getting a little bit of light snow paying off now here in the Twin Ports. 3.1 inches, more snow than normal so far for January. Could we put another three on tonight? We'll talk about the odds of that three set paying off coming up after the break. Injured? Call Stockman Law Office. Serious injuries including wrongful death, medical malpractice, and nursing home neglect. Call anytime, 218-576-8599. No recovery, no fee. Stockman Law Office. Serious injuries, serious law. I checked out a bunch of uh, other schools around the area, and really it came down to like the staff, the machine shop here. I went to the open house, talked to a, different, a lot of different companies from around here, and just chose that this would be a really good program to uh, get started in. Don't fight your car battery this winter. You need a battery you can trust. You need an interstate battery. Outrageously dependable. You'll be back on the road in no time. Interstate Battery, the one stop for all your battery needs. Sick of waiting for your furniture to arrive? Menards has furniture you need in stock. Plus, you get a free rug. That's right. Buy any upholstered living room furniture at $2.99 or more and get a free 5x7 area rug. That's $149.99 in savings. Need a new chair? How about a sectional? A new recliner or love seat? Buy one today. Get a free rug. Hurry up. Get some Menards before they're gone. In store only while supplies last. Save big money at Menards. At Humana, we believe your health care should evolve with you. And part of that evolution means choosing the right Medicare plan for you. Humana can help. With original Medicare, you are covered for hospital stays and doctor office visits, but you'll have to pay a deductible for each. A Medicare supplement plan can cover your deductibles and coinsurance, but you may pay higher premiums and still not get prescription drug coverage. But with an all-in-one Humana Medicare Advantage plan, you could get all that coverage plus Part D prescription drug benefits. You get all this coverage for as low as a $0 monthly plan premium in many areas. Humana has a large network of doctors and hospitals and telehealth coverage with a $0 copay. So call or go online today and get your free decision guide. Discover how an all-in-one Humana Medicare Advantage plan could save you money. Humana, a more human way to health care. Don't let the weather ruin your day. Dave Anderson, Peter Kavitkowskis, and Bo Fogel. The CBS3 weather team, tracking more than just severe storms. We're back. We got to look out for each other. It's what I was put on this earth to do. Let's do this. Oh! Let's get to work. The world is waiting for you. Go! got to be the worst job. Tonight, we're bringing the concert to you. Expect the unexpected. I'm excited about this new chapter. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. 
Another cold one this morning. Let's go right in and jump in with both feet like it's a polar plunge and see that Hibbing Chisholm Airport plunged to 30 below this morning. 11 below for Orr, 9 below at the airport in Duluth, 17 below for Moose Lake, 18 degrees below zero Solon Springs, and of course Hayward says hold on to my hat. 23 below there, 18 below from Ashland to Ironwood, and 27 degrees below zero for Waters Meet. Thanks to cloud cover and a snow chance tonight, it won't be that cold tomorrow morning. We're thinking low temps will be around zero at least for a day. By Sunday morning, we could go back towards 15 below. Here's what we have right now. At the airport in Duluth, 11 degrees above zero with light snow popping up, and that could continue till after the midnight hour. One to three inches is most likely for our region. At this moment, south-southwest winds going 21 miles per hour, but since it's a southerly wind, we don't have to worry about a wind chill factor tonight too badly. It does feel like eight below, but if that was a northerly wind, we'd probably have an alert out for that. Well, what are we looking at temperature-wise for right now? 15 above still International Falls, 10 above towards Ely, and 10 above around Cloquet. A little bit warmer towards Moose Lake, 12 for Two Harbors, 14 in Superior, 12 for our friends in Hayward, 15 Ashland, 13 Watersmeet, 14 right now in Ironwood. Not too bad, a nice short break from the cold snap we've had the past week. The cold snap going away for one day because of Clouds coming in in association with the low pressure system. And the latest radar shows the first band of this snow is coming through from northwest, heading towards southeast. It's come to the Twin Ports region and is now heading into Wisconsin and heading towards the UP. Well, I don't think we're going to get that much snow from this deal. This low is moisture starved. The Colorado low is feasting on more of the moisture from the Gulf than it is making it up into our area. But by tomorrow morning, I think we'll have one to three inches worth of snow to broom away. Latest models are indicating, oh, maybe an inch towards Mercer, an inch point two towards Orr, but that could get a little bit sassier and go towards three as time goes on. And then as time goes on, our low pressure system does migrate away, taking the snow chance with it. Higher pressure settling in from the northwest once again will cool us down again for the weekend as early as Saturday afternoon and by Sunday morning, yeah, we could be going towards 15 below here in the Twin Ports, colder for the inland areas. And on this map, we see that snow starts creeping in again Sunday afternoon well out to our west. That's setting us up for another light snow chance that could be with us on Monday. Forecast here tonight in Minnesota, the range of low temps oh, take off at least one layer because it'll only be five below to six above with that one to three inch snow chance. In Wisconsin and Michigan, one to seven above. Call Ripley's, believe it or not. And because we also believe this, it won't last forever. We start to cool down again as early as Saturday. So high temps in Wisconsin, Michigan, partly sunny sky in the afternoon, highs 11 to 14, but at least it's above zero. About five to 12 tomorrow for Minnesota in the afternoon with partial sunshine. Now eyeing up the extended forecast here. Yeah, it gets chilly again on Sunday. 15 below by the lake, so 25 below inland. 7 above for the high. Monday gets a 70% chance for another 1 to 3 inches of snow. And we get a high temp back up to 10 above. But then Tuesday and Wednesday it goes towards 15, 20 below again. Followed by a warm spell that could be coming our way by Thursday, Briggs. 23 above with another snow chance next Thursday. Yeah. And we hold on to... Temperatures above zero by Friday, 18 above is only 2 degrees cooler than normal <laughs> rather than 10 to 20 degrees cooler than normal. Yeah, that's no problem at all. We mm -hmm. just got to hold on for a little bit longer and we'll, we'll get to that 23 yeah. on Thursday. Like you mentioned, <laughs> hopefully that's still cool enough for those sled dogs that are going to be working hard next weekend. I sure hope so. That's one of my favorite events mm -hmm. all year long. So if they're in prime condition, that's when it's most fun to watch because they, they can really scoot out there. They like it cold. They sure do. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Well, a Duluth City Councilor is stepping down about halfway through his first term. Derek Medved shared the news with Council President Eric Forsman in an email last night. He says he needs to focus his energy on his business right now. He owns a series of convenience stores across our region. Medved will officially step down on February 14th. In the meantime, the rest of the council has to pass a resolution outlining a plan to fill Medved's seat. Once that passes, the council will start taking applications and choose a new member. That person will finish the rest of Medved's term, which is up in January of 2024. Medved holds one of the council's four at-large seats. We reached out to Medved for an interview today, but we did not hear back. Meanwhile, the John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon, as Dave and I were just talking about, is under 10 days away now. But first up is this weekend's Cub Run. 
Tomorrow, the youngest mushers will get to try their hand at the winter sport. Racers 14 and younger will be taking part in either a two-mile or quarter-mile race. Teams will feature the musher and two dogs. The Cub Run event will be held at the Lakeview National Golf Course in Two Harbors starting at 1 tomorrow afternoon. Anyone is invited to come cheer him on. Kevin, you uh, got a chance to learn curling when you first yeah. arrived here in oh, the Northland. Great. Now I think it's time for you to oh, hop boy, on a boy. sled dog team. If, 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 maybe if it was 23. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if You'll it's below 20, so. I, yeah, I, that, it's not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's next on the list. We'll get I you will, out there. I will check out those Bulldogs. Yeah. And oh, the Packers yeah. tomorrow. The Packers True. prepare for their matchup with San Fran in tomorrow's divisional game. Plus, huge UMB men's hockey series beginning in Omaha tonight. We update you on some Lady Dogs in Action Sports is next. Stay connected to live local CBS3. Check out our exclusive content on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as our mobile app, and join the conversation on today's big stories. Follow me. I'll lead the way. There's always something new under the sun. Oh, you just put me in a good mood. CBS Mornings, weekdays on CBS. Welcome to a caring community of older adults living safely in the company of others. Welcome to Benedictine Living Community Duluth. Located on the beautiful campus of the St. Scholastica Monastery, Benedictine Living Community Duluth offers a full range of living options and care services to live a full and healthy life. We are proud of our mission to serve our older adults and their families. We are Benedictine. Visit us today. Benedictine Living Community Duluth. Living fully, living well. Preparing for a change? Whether you're downsizing to simplify or find yourself with an empty nest, visit yournorthlandhome.com. View comprehensive information that will help you find your new home with JS Realty. With guides such as questions to ask yourself before downsizing, yournorthlandhome.com has all the information you need to find a place that feels like home. Download your free guide today at yournorthlandhome.com. Hi, folks. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Call, check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-310-2570. That's 1-800-310-2570 now. When building, you hire a team of specialists to ensure your house turns out exactly as you imagined. Major financial transitions like retirement deserve the same level of care and craftsmanship. At MPPL Financial, we assemble a diverse team of experts to develop a plan to ensure you only have to retire once. Call today for your free second opinion consultation so your retirement turns out exactly as you imagined. MPPL Financial. Answers to the most important questions of your life. Be a little bit brave. Don't ever be afraid to. Got a couple questions. Do you think it's time for schools to reopen? There is some positive breaking news. We've got a lot of important new information for you and your family. Get your news on the go. The CBS 3 mobile app. Aaron Rodgers said Randall Cobb would likely be back for the postseason and QB1 is not wrong today. Packers activating Cobb from the injured reserve list. Cobb suffered a core injury against the Rams on his touchdown right before halftime. Seven weeks and one surgery later, he's ready to return in time for his first playoff appearance since 2016. The last Packers run the veteran wide receiver only had 375 yards on the season, but was a security blanket for Rodgers on third down and also had his most touchdown receptions in a season since 2015. Looking at the journey, it would mean everything. Um, 
you know, just being able to come back, it definitely would be a storybook ending uh, for this year. Um, everything that has happened uh, through the course of the season uh, for us to have so many guys that we lost, including myself throughout the season. I haven't seen a playoff since 2016, so um, I'm really excited uh, for the opportunity to just to, to be out there and, and help contribute. Kickoff from Lambeau is at 715. At long last, they meet again. The number seven Bulldogs go back to Baxter to meet the number 16 Nebraska Omaha Mavericks for their first time in over a year after playing in the pod for nine games. Speaking of familiar territory, head coach Scott Sandlin has said prior to this experience in the juniors with Isaiah Seville, the veteran goaltender for the Mavs, an armor the dogs will need to crack something they struggled with last weekend, Sandlin said, while his squad generated chances, played with lots of energy, and put a lot of pressure on the puck. It did not translate after practice week that he describes as, quote, fun and normal. And with a 9-0-1 record against Omaha in the last 10 meetings, the Dogs are up for their next test. You look at their goaltender, um, been their guy for three years. They've got a talented group of forwards. You know, you look at uh, how the way, you know, Ward started the year. Uh, was one of the leading goal scorers. They've got a good mix. They're, I just, I think their team has kind of matured over the last couple of years. They play a, a heavy style. They can skate. Uh, they get to the net hard, and, and their special teams are good. So we, we've got a big challenge ahead of us, but I think our guys are looking forward to it. Puck drop is set for 7.07 p.m., and we will, it will be on the My9 Sports Network. We will have the latest and greatest from this game at 10. We also have some Lady Dogs in action. In women's hockey, number 8 UMD tied with number 2 Ohio State at 0 at the end of the second period. And in basketball, the Dogs down 2 at the half in Augustana. We will have both those highlights from those games tonight at 10. We also have UMD basketball, the men's a top 20 matchup in Augustina as well. Yeah. So some great games for the Bulldogs, really big games coming up. Yeah, big weekend for sports, oh, yeah. Bulldogs, Packers. Best of luck to them all. All right, thanks, Kevin. And speaking of dogs, <laughs> time to cast your votes for the favorite animals for this year's Lake Superior Ice Festival. Voting for this year's Canine King and Queen Contest. And the felines of the festival contest started this morning, and it goes through Monday night. One male and one female will be chosen for both the dog and the cat categories. I forgot to enter Harry, I'm though. Sorry, I choose Harry. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> bummer on my part. <laughs> it will cost you one dollar, though, to vote uh, for each time you vote, and all proceeds will go to the Humane Society of Douglas County. The winners will be crowned on Saturday, January 29th, during the Lake Superior Ice Festival in Superior. We'll have a link to where you can cast your votes on our website. Such cute dogs there entered in the contest. Hopefully, Dave, that ice festival will uh, get to see some of this cold weather stick around yeah, to make hold, for some ice. They'll be holding onto their ice <laughs> yeah, pretty well. Good. It's going to be cold for the most part for the week ahead with a little bit of snow coming across tonight. One to three inches possible by early tomorrow morning. That'll be followed then by this low pressure system leaving and higher pressure taking over. So we go from the snow tonight to a return of the cool and the ice for the rest of the weekend. All right, we'll see you back here at 10.